some tensions have surfaced in the international courts about where the dividing line is between crimes against humanity, genocide, and even war crimes. Now as to the origins, given the focus of this conference on the Nuremberg Tribunal, a word about when and how these two categories of international crimes came into being. The tribunal, of course, features the first appearance on the international court scene of crimes against humanity, a category that was designed to cover the Nazi atrocities perpetrated by the German government on its own citizens, Jews, and other disfavored groups, as well as crimes inflicted on people of occupied countries. But some historians argue that its recognition in the Nuremberg judgment, and Sharif alluded to this as a crime against <coughs> under customary law, was distinctly, quote, problematic. According to Telford Taylor, the French saw, quote, little to distinguish crimes to be charged under crimes against humanity from those already dealt with, or even crimes against military and civilian victims. The Chief Nuremberg Prosecutor, Justice Robert Jackson, insisted that these internal crimes, as Lila pointed out, must be tied to other more traditional war crimes, or to the newly minted crime of aggressive war itself. Thus, only the Holocaust-related crimes committed after September 1st, 1939, when World War II officially began, were allowed to be prosecuted as such. There was, however, much evidence of earlier crimes against humanity allowed into the record as background for the later prosecuted crimes. And indeed, that link between crimes against humanity and war continued through to the enabling charter of the ICTY, though not, as Sheree pointed out, to the ICTR, nor to the Rome Statute. Uh, I would point out here, however, that the ICTY link, which was still there when I was on the court, required only the existence of an armed conflict during the period when the crimes against humanity were committed, not even the kind of direct nexus with that armed conflict that a war crime uh, required. In Nuremberg, what would now constitute genocide was then, of course, prosecuted as a crime against humanity. After World War II, through the relentless efforts of Ralph Lemkin, the concept of genocide as a separate international crime emerged. The Genocide Convention defined that new crime as requiring, quote, an intent to destroy in whole or in part a religious, racial, na <coughs> national, or ethnical say, group as such, and the commission of at least one of five designated crimes to accomplish that purpose, but it dropped altogether any nexus with war. The precision of the commission of the convention's definitional requirements engendered a lot of debate during the draft of the Convention itself and its subsequent ratification. It survives basically intact, however, its language in all of the charters of the international hybrid courts, though modified in some minor respects in the Rome Statute and its elements of crime. The textual differences between the two crimes, very briefly, crimes against humanity and genocide are the following. Crimes of humanity, crimes against humanity, require the acts prosecuted be part of a, quote, systematic or widespread attack against a civilian population, and that the perpetrator know about this wider campaign when he or she commits the particular act that constitutes a crime against humanity. Genocide requires that the acts, which can only be the specific five ones listed, be committed against a racial, religious, national, or ethnic group, and be done with a specific intent of destroying that group in whole or in part as such. The genocidal acts themselves may be committed against only a few persons, and they don't have to be part of a widespread or systematic campaign against civilians, although the Rome Statute and its elements of crime now adds something along those lines requiring that, quote, the conduct took place in the context of a manifest pattern of similar conduct directed against the group, or was conduct that could itself affect such destruction. But the tightly restricted definition in the Genocide Convention of destroy, an intent to destroy, has been interpreted by virtually all the courts to rule out all but the physical or biological destruction of the group. Cultural destruction is not enough. And the exclusion of targeted groups such as women, economic or social classes, or political groups has evoked, you can understand, a great deal of frustration on the part of many human rights groups. They're not entirely mollified by the fact that victims and the later groups can be vindicated through prosecution of crimes against humanity. 
There are other comment, commentators, such as my friend Bill Shabbos, who are grateful that genocide, which in the popular mind is the crime of all crimes, the worst of all crimes, is so limited and does not thereby lose its deterrent currency through too extensive, expansive application of every kind of massacre. Still, it must not be forgotten that crimes against humanity were originally conceptualized as acts of so odious a nature that their commission was not just an assault on the particular victims involved, as with war crimes, but an offense against all humanity. Thus, Hannah Arendt described the Holocaust as, quote, a crime against humanity perpetrated upon the body of the Jewish people, unquote. The Yugoslav Tribunal, in its first Kaddish judgment, opined that, quote, crimes against humanity are crimes of a special nature to which a greater degree moral turpitude attaches than to an ordinary crime. Indeed, in another early case, Adelovic, the appeals chamber of ICTY overturned the guilty plea of a foot soldier to crimes against humanity because they found he had not been adequately informed of the difference between pleading to a war crime and pleading to a crime against humanity, despite there being no difference in the penalty that the court could impose for either of the two crimes. But it said, because of their heinousness and magnitude, crimes against humanity constitute an egregious attack on human dignity on the very notion of humaneness. Now, the expansion of the list of recognized crimes against humanity since Nuremberg have all been adopted through court interpretation of customary law, but they're noteworthy. Prosecutions under Control Council No. 10, which followed, the main Nuremberg trial, included rape as a crime against humanity in its own right, whereas Nuremberg had prosecuted it only under the rubric of outrages against dignity. The most recent list of crimes against humanity in the Rome Statute include not only the murder, extermination, deportation, and a few others that were derived from Nuremberg, but now include forcible transfer of population which is internal to a country whereas deportation is across country borders, imprisonment, torture, rape, sexual slavery, and forced prostitution, forced pregnancy, and forced sterilization or any other form of sexual violence of comparable gravity, persecution against any identifiable group on political, racial, national, ethnic, cultural, religious, gender, mm -hmm. or other grounds universally recognized as impermissible under international law, Enforced disappearance of persons or the crime of apartheid, <clears throat> also other humane, inhumane acts of a similar character. 